If you've ever experienced that feast and famine feeling when it comes to attracting abundance in your life, then you're going to love this episode of Tapping with Mel that I did recently with one of the members of my Tapping into Your Big Vision members community, Karen. Now, um, Karen has manifested some amazing things um, in her life um, recently as well, which she shares in this episode. But also in this episode, we tap for consistent income um, to let go of that feast famine story. So if that resonates, um, I'd love you to watch this episode, tap along with us. And I'd love to hear in the comments below um, how this episode has helped you. So um, I hope you enjoy this episode of Tapping with Mel. Make sure you're following me um, on my Instagram channel at I am Melanie Moore, where we go live every Tuesday. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy this episode. See you next time. Hi, good afternoon. It's Melanie here and this is another, this is the second Instagram live episode of Tapping with Mel. So in a minute, I am hopefully going to be joined by my guest and I think she's just arrived but let me just um just do a tell you what this episode's about so um tapping with Mel the title kind of tells you what to expect um, there's going to be somebody tapping live with me each week and each week we're going to be tapping on I, I like to talk about the four pillars of your big vision and the pillars are health which was last week's episode with Lisa Nichols. Do go and check that out if you haven't done so already. Um, abundance, which is today's episode. We are going to be talking a bit more about that, but also relationships and environments. These are what I believe are the four pillars of your big vision. And when we can work towards me making each of those pillars our version of a 10 out of 10, I think that's a pretty great life that we've got there. So um, let me bring my guest on. Let Yay! Good morning, Karen. Good morning. I've never done an Instagram live before, so. Well, I know you, you, I see you go live on Facebook quite a lot, don't you? So it's just, a, just the same. It's, it's fine. In fact, in fact, I don't actually go live on Instagram as much, but I'm beginning to kind of enjoy this now, particularly now that um, technology enables us to repurpose our content to other platforms so um, I think what I love about it is that you know how people can kind of just join us and and anyway so where are you I know where you're tuning in from but tell the audience it's a bit of an early start for you isn't it um I'm in Utah I did have to like go wake the kids up just now and go you look okay can I say you look amazing what time oh. did you get up to get ready <laughs> I, I just got up at six so um I just told the kids I go I'm going live when you wake up, go downstairs. <laughs> oh, bless them. Okay. You never know. It could be tapping with kids. <laughs> well, that'd be a whole new episode. Maybe, maybe I'll do that one day. Um, I, I, I've tapped with my children since they were tiny. So yeah, tap, we'd have a special tapping with kids episode. So I was just saying before you joined me, um, how, um, each week I want to tap on one of the four pillars and um, so we've obviously kind of discussed in advance loosely what the topic is going to be today but I, I kind of made some notes that I wanted to make sure that I included and I think do you know what, with you I think we cover pretty much all four pillars in, in your in your story and in how much I didn't have. so Karen is also an author and she very kindly sent me a copy of her book last year. And I had it. Oh, I was going to show it. And I wanted to. Do you have it to hand that, um, to show? Oh, much more prepared than I am. So Karen is also. Right, Karen, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. I am um, Karen Keener of The Sovereign Mom. So uh, I got The Sovereign Mom up and going. The SovereignMom.com. And then I wrote a book about two years ago it's for moms mainly for moms that are struggling um with exhaustion and fatigue and about learning to create better boundaries with that and to help them you know get their get their 
focus back on their kids instead of on all the external people that invade our lives. And it's called Autobiography of a Nobody from Floundering to Freedom. And then this year, I just started teaching boundaries just for people with for relationships in general. But I do have a whole chapter in here for single moms or just single people in general that has a really cool exercise in it that oh. helps attract the right partner. So congratulations. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Karen's also a member of my uh, Tapping Into Your Big Vision members community and has been for a good couple of years now. And it's been really amazing to watch your journey over the past um, two years years at least and um and to see kind of you know the ups and downs because life is ups and downs it isn't all just ups and happy high five days you know we have we have our challenges as well as mums as um you know human beings we have a whole you know we have all sorts of emotions to deal with and and what i love about you is how that you you are so consistent in showing up through the good times and the not so good times. And you were always willing to kind of like raise your hand and, you know, either ask for help, offer help to others. And I think you've been just such a wonderful member of the community that, um, and of course, it's no surprise at all that when I put the call out to my members to say, you know, I'm starting this new show on Instagram and, and I'd like this, you know, to offer this an, as an opportunity to my members to, you know, come and have a one-to-one -one session with me live well that's the only caveat we do it live. who wouldn't who wouldn't raise their hand <laughs> well you were literally one of the first and it's like I think, and that's the thing some people don't raise their hands when they're given opportunities i think that's a whole separate other conversation you know you can be literally given an opportunity and people will say mm, i'll let someone else take the opportunity because it's not valuing yourself it's not i think jack canfield did a great um example of this he's talked about you know he literally i think holding i'm not sure if it's a ten dollar bill or a hundred hundred dollar bill i think it is it, at his workshops and he says who wants this yes. and everyone just sits there what i'm being offered a hundred dollar bill and everyone just sits there and eventually somebody just stands and says, okay eventually somebody gets up and takes it and how many times in our lives are we kind of given opportunities that we don't want to take because we think, oh, I'll just let somebody else go first. Or they're afraid there's not enough to go around. And so they contribute to their own lack by creating this like kind of like false generosity and this belief that there's not enough to go around in the universe or something. Yeah. So, which, yeah, which, which we know is not true. But anyway, that's a whole separate thing. So. I just want to kind of give a little bit of kind of background um, on you. So, so in each episode, we will be doing a round of tapping. And my intention is that when we do the tapping together, obviously we're going to be tapping for you and, um, and whatever it is you need to tap on today. But just like the episode with Lisa last week, um, you know, lots of other people found value in it, even though I was tapping with Lisa. So, you know, the comp, yeah, yeah. And you, you were a little bit under the weather last week, weren't you? So last week we were tapping for vibrant health. And even though it's for Lisa and her symptoms and what she was experiencing this week, um, the focus is prosperity and abundance. And I don't think there's anyone in the world who says, do you know what? I have enough abundance. There might be a few people. I have enough abundance in my life. No, thanks. I think I'll skip this episode. <laughs> Always room for a bit more abundance to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I wanted to just share first, um, because today we're going to be particularly talking about consistent abundance, because I think we've all, you know, we can all talk about times when we've manifested money, we've experienced, you know, abundance in our lives. So um, I think on that note, I'd love you, if you don't mind, I'd love you to share. Yeah, um, so something you you're very about a year ago, we were doing a tapping for a full moon in the members community. And it like hit me, something moved me. And um, we talked about it in the call. And I, when we finished the call, it was late at night, I think, or something, or in the morning, whatever. And I just let myself ugly cry and tapped about like attracting a certain energy into my life of a divine supportive mother that I felt like I never had. And then like a couple of weeks later, I got a $100,000 check in the mail from my mom, who I have no contact with, no expectation to contact her. I don't have a phone number or an address to call her back or say thank you because she'd moved. 
and sold her house, but she gave me a hundred thousand dollars from part of the sale of her house. And so, wow. it, and it was like this, like affirmation that, you know, you don't have to have this person in your life and you still are going to receive the abundance of the universe because I felt like the moon and a lot of other things that symbolically represent mother for me are showing up for me out there in the universe. And so awesome. I can manifest. And, and that wasn't like the first time we've manifested like a hundred thousand dollars. It seems to be like, it's that, like, it's always a hundred though. <laughs> it's never more. It's never, it, it, and it's just kind of a funny thing, but it, it feels like feast or famine for me because it seems like we'll go a stretch and then we'll get another hundred thousand and then we'll go a like long stretch. And then, and it's like, I just want a consistent income would be even better for me because then I wouldn't have to go through the like 11th hour kind of fear. And I think about the word currency a lot and like how it's current and how it's con and like, I'm in the flow of it all the time, but mm -hmm. I just don't know how to get myself into that. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like it's out there somewhere and not here. So, and funny enough, I've, I had a similar conversation with my son recently, um, because you know he's only seventeen. He's got a part-time job. You know, obviously his focus is you know education at the moment, and um, and I'm very much aware that you know the money stories that we have are created in our childhood in through what our parents teach us so I've always tried to kind of give my children quite good money well as you know I never knew what a money story was when I was 17 it was just you know it was either there or 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 it wasn't or but I certainly do remember things my parents said about money like you know oh you know or you can't afford we can't afford this or you know we have to save my parents were real savers they didn't really like a rainy day yeah, and they didn't like putting things on credit cards. You had to literally save for it. So my parents were real savers, which is not a bad thing. Um, but with my son, um, I've kind of, I've noticed kind of he's a saver as well, but with more of a tendency to kind of like hoard the money and not wanting to part with it. And I said, that's the wrong energy as well, because, you know, just like currency, it has to flow in and out and has to circulate. So I've been encouraging, you know, to like, you know, he's just got a car recently. But I so said to him, you know, you know, you need to contribute towards the costs of that. And um, so I've made him set up a direct debit to, you know, contribute towards it. And I said, you know, what flows out will flow back in again. And um, and I think this is I think this can be kind of where the feast or famine story can kind of come from, where you feel like you kind of have to hoard it all up and then you spend it all out and then you kind of save it, save it, save it again. And then you spend it all out. But, yeah, I think that's a great um thing for us to tap on that um so let's just unravel this a bit more can you can you think of the, an earliest time when you experienced this kind of feast famine cycle so my, my parents they always had enough money and i feel like they were pretty wealthy but there was this story under under everything because my dad was in construction that the winter was the rainy season so we could never spend any money and we never took, even though they told us we were wealthy, we have enough money for everything. We never went on vacations. We always had like secondhand cars, secondhand everything. And um, I, I got made fun of a little bit in school because of it, because we went to a really nice school in Newport Beach, California and everything that was a private school. And everyone had super nice cars. And my mom had a big ugly van. And so it was this like, I got really teased about because they just thought we were broke. And my parents are like, we have a lot of money. We just don't spend it on that kind of stuff. And I, I felt always like, oh, man, I got to figure out. I don't know. It, I guess I just felt um, like, OK, we've always got to be saving because that next winter is coming. It, literally, winter is coming. And we were literally saving for a rainy day because my dad wasn't going to be doing asphalt paving when it's raining because you can't do it. You can't work in the rain. So we, you know, knew that <laughs> winter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, sense of like, feast, it, it was like the, the rainy season's going to be here. We need to save for a rainy day. There was always that feeling like, well, we don't, you know, and 
uh, I know like when the recession hit, my dad bought up like all of his competitors because they hadn't done what he had done. And so I guess it just even further reinforced that saving up that money was like the best thing that we could do. And, and so now I don't know when I spend, I don't know what I'm doing and I feel like I'm overspending. And like you said, it's like, I feel like I'm just like putting it all out there and I'm, I'm just, I feel like I'm just experimenting wildly and recklessly and I don't have any mindfulness about what I'm, I, I kind of want to spend money to make money, but then I don't ever end up making as much money as I spent and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, there's quite a lot there, quite a lot there too. They never uh, taught me how to spend money, so I just didn't, mm. I, they just told me how to save money, like save, mm. save, save. Yeah, and I think there is something to be said for, for mindful spending as well, because we can get kind of into that whole, oh, that's fine, the universe will provide, I'll just spend, you know, um, you know that's something else that to, to, to be mindful of as well. Um, so just another couple of questions I wanted to ask you before because so before I tap with any of you know my clients or um, students or the members I, I kind of like to gather as much background information as possible um, because I, I never script my tapping um, and I just kind of just know when the moment feels right to start tapping but I feel like I just need a little bit more to gather a bit more information but I'd love to know particularly you know those watching live on Instagram at the moment you know obviously just look to your comment and then I think we buy more than we need rather than than what we really need. Yeah, I was at Costco this morning and that's a classic example of a place where you go and you don't, <laughs> you go there, and you don't need any of the stuff, but you end up just buying it anyway. So, so yeah, absolutely. So um, I'd just love to know for other people watching, you know, because I'd be asking you to tap along with us in a minute, just to think about your early relationship, you know, with money and your parents and, and perhaps, you know, the messages that, um, you were told and how it's affected your relationship with money today um, because there are all sorts of stories and sometimes it takes you know when you look back you can kind of make the connections you think ah oh, that's where that came from and that's why I have the habits I have today so those who've just joined us today we're going to be doing some tapping in a minute to break the feast and famine cycle when it comes to um to money um and i'd love to know just put a hand raise emoji or thumbs up emoji um if this is something that resonates with you um so i'd love to hear um so karen and um, you also mentioned about the relationship with your parents so you know i kind of just want to kind of just touch on that slightly because i feel that there may be something there as well because you because obviously you mentioned you, you don't really have a relationship with your parents now and um would you would you say that there could be a connection there money wise i don't know i, I think <clears throat> recent as of recently the reason why i ended up disconnecting with my father was that when aaron and i or when i would talk to him about what aaron and i were doing moving to utah and everything this was years ago he just passed away this january but um years ago you know, two or three years ago, it was just every time I would talk to him, there was this like disappointment about what, like trying to start our own business. And I don't know, his expectation was that we would get more of a standard traditional job. We're both kind of artists, musician type people. And so there there was just a big disconnect there and there was just always this heaps of disappointment and fear around what I was doing financially mm. um what decisions we were making to move to Utah and a lot of other things so there mm. is that. that that was pretty like that was just why I was just like I can't listen to this anymore like every time I call I feel like I should kick myself in the butt because I <laughs> Every time I answer the phone to this guy, I feel like this just like heavy disappointment being laid on me that was just like, it, it, there was no like hope. There was no like, oh, you're starting your own business. You're entrepreneurs. How exciting. No. It, and he was an entrepreneur and had his own business, but he wanted us to have like a linear different type of, you know, just work for somebody else and that kind of thing and it just I guess it scared the crud out of him and 
I mean, I'm sure it was out of love, but it just be, it was just intolerable. Yeah. <laughs> it was so the toxic. Thing, the thing that's come up for me here again is, you know, artists, creatives, I hear this so much um, that, you know, parents kind of like, okay, that's okay for a hobby, but you know, mm, not really a proper job. And there is that whole starving artist syndrome, you know, you got to sing for your supper. <laughs> there's kind of those deep rooted subconscious stories that artists have and how many guitarists do you see on the street literally singing with a cap in hand um you know so i think you know add that to the mix as well that there seems to be a bit going on and but also you are you're launching as well aren't you you're launching um a course and that's something you know i've been helping to support you with um, because I think as entrepreneurs you know we are thinking of creative ways to make money it's this gene that's inside of us think that we don't want to conform we we're practically unemployable <laughs> um, and we just want to um, somebody said Sylvia said disappointed parents welcome to my world oh bless Sylvia I hope this round of tapping helps you as well um, that yeah that it's like we have that vision and obviously this is a bit that I love everyone to start with. What is that vision that you have for your life? What is a vision that you, you know, you know, the ideal home, the ideal day that you'd want to experience, you know, what does that vision look like? But also part of that vision is how you make your money and how you be of service to the world. And, um, and, you know, and for some people that does involve, you know, a career, a, a regular job. And if it's something you love and passionate about, fantastic but if you want freedom and you know you've got in your name haven't you I, I guess freedom is a core value for you isn't it yeah it is it's a big one <laughs> yeah and I think freedom is a core value for a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners you know we we crave that freedom and living life on our own terms which is you know why we we set out with these crazy ideas and I think it's Steve Jobs that says you know he's the crazy people who are going to go and change the world um so yeah, I I love to support entrepreneurs and creatives and artists who, you know, well, you have these gifts, you have these skills, you have the experiences that you've been through um, in order to make a difference, in order to help others. And, and but yet there's some sort of kind of conflict in terms of, oh, you know, how much can I charge for that? Or can I make a, an abundant living doing that? Would you feel there's kind of some conflict there as well? Um, yeah, there is, there is a bit, I think having like put more out lately, I see that I'm helping people. I got my first, um, Substack subscriber cause I put a lot of my content on Substack and I got my first, she paid for a year in full up front. So that was like awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and validating because that was like my very first live with this stuff and and i had been putting all the content out in writing but never actually like stepped in front of the camera to coach and i was like is this gonna work and the video was clipping and doing all this weird stuff and i still like connected with someone and i felt like yeah this is probably what i should it was very validating that like i could teach this you know i can coach and fantastic and that's the thing and if you can reach out to one person um then there's nothing to stop you from helping a hundred or a thousand people it's just then um you know sharpening up your message and um and just doing more of what you're doing and that's the thing it's a bit like me and you know my youtube um channel you know that that's taken a good couple of years to gain traction and and, and i think a lot of entrepreneurs you know give up quite early or we kind of not in it for the long haul it's just like okay I'm gonna give this a few months and if it doesn't work out then I it doesn't work that way and I think every successful person I've seen you know you don't see all the things that they put in before the years and years of doing this so so yeah keep doing what you're doing you're doing an amazing job you're doing an amazing job so is there anything I should like to kind of, I'll just look at my, my notes here if I, um, yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to kind of add to the tapping pot that, um, yeah. You know, I just, I do have the vision, you know, that I'm, I'm 
getting asked to talk about my book and getting asked to go talk about boundaries places and public speaking and doing more of that. And so I do have a vision for how this job could continue to scale or progress. And mm -hmm. so, um, job, this career, this entrepreneurship or whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. um, coaching and helping people and, and just maybe also more of seeing other people receiving the message and getting a benefit from it. And yeah, that would be nice to have that consistent as well. Like this consistency yeah. and, and a kind of a, what's the word? Uh, momentum, like uh, picking up momentum as it, it's consistent, but also momentous. Like it's just continuing to grow and evolve and I don't know. Right. Right. So one of the first things that I do um, when it comes to um, tapping for abundance, which is what we're going to be doing, is I think if we try to be as, as specific as possible. Now, sometimes we just want to manifest um, a little windfall or a big windfall in your case, you know, like 100 grand, you know, that's quite significant. Um, uh, if you missed the beginning, do go back and watch the replay later. Karen shared how she manifested $100,000 out of the blue last year after doing some letting go work in the full moon um because we're going to be doing some letting go here as well but is to get clear of you know when we talk about the vision and the sort of life we want to create we're going to have um, a figure in mind as to how much we want to generate every single month and so this now we're talking about the consistent income and um and i don't know if you have that figure in mind karen um as to what would be a really great figure that you would fourteen thousand dollars a month would be nice that fourteen would, i love that that would, that would cover more than my bills and money to start putting away for a house for a land mm. to build a house because i designed a house years ago and i want to put it somewhere <laughs> it just lives in my brain for now <laughs> All ideas do live in our brain to begin with. So that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, have a think about, and for everyone else watching along, have a think about, you know, what that monthly income goal looks like. And to begin with, it might be, I would love to make an extra $500, 500 pounds a month or an extra thousand pounds a month. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with kind of going up incrementally, but I like to have kind of a big vision a big picture goal in mind something that we're kind of striving towards as well so that could be an extra five ten or um fifty thousand pounds or dollars a month and you know because i remember when i first did this exercise i got a tapping video on youtube tapping for fifty thousand pounds a month and it was actually one of my friends who really encouraged me to make this tapping video and i, I it's kind of actually that sounds like the perfect figure but then i remember tapping for a certain amount like, oh my gosh but then i'd have to pay tax as well but no 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 that's not enough i need fifty thousand a month <laughs> so um if you if you had if you had fifty thousand a month you could get a good accountant that could get you out of a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely so yeah have a think about it and write down you know what does that ideal life look like um you know sort of car you know mortgage payments and so the, you are you know being quite specific because this is when the universe kind of gives you a helping hand this is when ideas are generated this is when um you get the inspiration to create something um because you know when we kind of start looking well this is what i want the universe then presents us with opportunities for us to take action upon so you know that's the next bit you know we've got to take action on this so you get the ideas for your course and you get and then you know you come and discuss the ideas and we flush out these ideas together but then it's of course the action taking then it's like okay things didn't work out the first time you know what could i do better next time and then we just keep improving but all the meanwhile how i think tapping just helps with our lives is that it keeps us balanced on a day-to-day -day basis on the ups and downs you know with mum life with dealing with all the other things that life has to throw at us you know in order to stay in alignment tapping helps us to be able to stay in alignment so that we can take the action that we need to take towards to to, to go towards the bigger bigger vision so that yeah i guess that will make sense to you karen <laughs> okay right so so let's tap so before we tap thinking about this 
consist right so fourteen thousand pounds a month of dollars a month this would be the the dream consistent monthly figure so how do, how believable does that feel right now it feels a long way away <laughs> Not way. and um and what are the feelings, what are the thoughts that are coming up for you when thinking about, um, I'm, you know, I am capable or I am, I am earning $14,000 a month. Um, how to balance my life. Mm -hmm. So you feel that some sort of compromise would happen in your life? Possibly. I'm, I fear it. Fear it. What's your fear? Um, then I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off. <laughs> wow. So you have to work really hard for this? Um, yeah, uh, more just like overwhelm and not being able to focus and find time for myself. Okay, so just the thought of it, mm -hmm. bringing up all this in your body, okay. Um, and, where, and where are you feeling that in your body? Mm, yeah like across the collarbones for some reason okay. and can you put a um a figure kind of so you mentioned overwhelm there running around like a headless chicken um <clears throat> yeah yeah i guess it's overwhelm isn't it and like frantic <clears throat> overwhelm frantic and how strong is that energy out of 10 um, it's a solid seven, maybe a two and eight, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would you feel there's kind of a lot of unknowns in here as well? Or yeah, uh, yeah, that's, there's a fear of the unknown in that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And here's the other thing. So I want you to imagine kind of a time in the not too distant future where you are consistently making $14,000 a month. Um, how does that feel? Still, still kind of butterflies, <laughs> mm -hmm. a little bit of butterflies. Yeah. Okay. Exciting. And then a little scary. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Great. So I think all the while we kind of feel this like, well, how's this going to happen? This, with this overwhelm in the body, it feels frantic and stressful. Um, and really, you know, so far removed from a peaceful life. Um, it kind of almost feels safer in the peaceful known, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I always call it the discomfort zone when I, when I'm realistic about it. No. <laughs> okay. When I'm realistic about it. No. Cause it, in realistically speaking, it's it's it doesn't feel safe to be worried about when the next paycheck's gonna come, you know, or mm -hmm. when the next yeah. There's nothing really, you know. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. um, but there is like a leap, like there's like it's like leap and the net will appear. You do have to take a jump for it, and that's the scary part, I guess. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's what entrepreneurship is, just leaping from one um, <laughs> one step to the next. And we're thinking, oh, my God, what's going to happen? But um, yeah, but it's kind of exciting. <laughs> OK, so it'd be nice to have more kind of in the way of not so much of that. Oh, my God, where's the net? Um, and just to kind of just glide I think from one step to the next that's the energy that I'm feeling yeah yes okay yeah. all right then okay so we are going to tap I've, I've not done this before actually on tapping for a specific kind of income goal and obviously you being a member in the community now that I know that these are the goals that we're anchoring in um and also it's a bit like public declaration accountability it's almost like saying out loud to the universe this is what i want i think some people are afraid to actually speak that out loud again even saying that out loud how does that make you feel um i i'm like is that too much is that too little you know like like 
what are other people going to think that's a crazy goal or is other people going to think that's just a small goal you need to think bigger or you know what i mean i'm worried about what other people would think i guess that typical when you say something and you're saying it in a public forum and yeah yeah that's the biggest problem that entrepreneurs have i think worrying what others think that's what stops most of us before we even get started with the fact that you've got this bar the fact that you're actually here live with me you, you're way beyond worrying what other people think so um i don't think that's so much of a problem so okay i think we're ready to tap now so um just for everyone else who's tapping along with us i want you to think about perhaps an income goal that you would like to um manifest or create or make make reality and but also think about perhaps any old money stories that you want to let go of as well so i'm going to be doing a little bit of that with karen first on what she's talked about and um some of the history stuff that she shared about her father um but there's something in the tapping work of borrowing benefits where even though i'm tapping with karen and what she shared with me today um going to kind of send this kind of energy out to um everyone else so that it kind of clears um whatever is in um your reality as well and if anyone's got any questions about this afterwards please feel free to send me a dm and um and I can point you towards some other resources. So, so right, Karen. Just join the membership community. Forget the DM. Just go straight to the membership. Oh. <laughs> Directly to go. <laughs> A lecture on the Monopoly board. <laughs> oh, bless you. Thanks, Karen. Yes, of course, there is that option as well. So, right. And so now, and also, this is a member's benefit as well. Um, it's at the moment it's just members who i'm inviting to come and tap with me as long as they come and are brave enough like karen to come volunteer so um right i'm ready let's tap okay ready so everyone just tap along with us do as i do say as i say and um and yeah and we're gonna tap for fourteen thousand dollars a month okay here we go okay and also we're gonna tap on letting go of this feast famine cycle and tap for income consistency Okay, so Karen, I'm starting on the karate chop point. Even though I have all these old money stories. Even though I have all these old money stories. That stem from my childhood. That stem from my childhood. That have its roots. That have its roots. From when my father always used to say from when my father always used to say, we have to save for the winter. That we have to save for the winter. We can't spend all our money at once. We can't spend all our money at once. And even though I was shown. And even though I was shown. Some unhealthy relationships with money. Some unhealthy relationships with money. Because that was just a result of my parents' upbringing. Because that was a result of my parents' upbringing. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I have all these old money memories. Even though I have all these old money memories. That go all the way back through my childhood. That go all the way back through my childhood. And even though my parents had plenty of money and even though my parents had plenty of money they hoarded it away they hoarded it away for a rainy day for a rainy day so it didn't feel that abundant so it didn't feel that abundant and even though we were abundant and even though we were abundant i just didn't feel it i just didn't feel it and maybe it's time to let go of that. And maybe it's time to let go of that. That old story. That old story. And my parents' relationship with money. And my parents' relationship with money. And I choose to deeply and completely. And I choose to deeply and completely. Love and honor myself. Love and honor myself. Even though there's this history of feast and famine. Even though there's this history of feast and famine. And it's just something that I've gotten used to. And it's something that I've gotten used to. And I'm recognizing that now. I'm recognizing that now. 
maybe it's time to let that go. Maybe it's time to let that go. That maybe I can feast all the time. Maybe I can feast all the time. And allow myself to feel abundant all the time. And allow myself to feel abundant all the time. And I let go of this old story. And I let go of this old story. That life has to be feast or famine. That life has to be feast or famine. And I choose to deeply and completely. And I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor and forgive myself. Love, honor and forgive myself. And anybody else associated with this story. And anybody else associated with this story. Can I go through the points now? This old story. This old story. Of feast and famine. Of feast and famine. It's become so familiar to me now. It's become so familiar to me now. That it almost feels like a comfort zone situation. That it almost feels like a comfort zone situation. That I can endure the famine. That I can endure the famine. Because I know the feast is coming. Because I know the feast is coming. And even though I know that's no good for my nervous system. And even though I know that's no good for my nervous system. I've allowed it to become a pattern. I've allowed it to become a pattern. And even though I know I'm good at manifesting money. And even though I know I'm good at manifesting money. I'm ready to let go of this old story. I'm ready to let go of this old story. That it has to be feast or famine. That it has to be feast or famine. I'm letting go of this old story now. I'm letting go of this old story now. Clearing away the need. I'm clearing away the need. To be in this continuous cycle. To be in this continuous cycle. I'm releasing the need. I'm releasing the need. To live with this roller coaster of emotions. To live with this roller coaster of emotions. And I choose to know. And I choose to know. That I have a vision for the type of life I want to create. That I have a vision for the type of life I want to create. The type of home I want to live in. The type of home I want to live in. How my relationship will be. How my relationship will be. And how I'll raise my children. And how I'll raise my children. I choose to tap into a new story. I choose to tap into a new story. That it's safe for me to have a consistent income. That it's safe for me to have a consistent income. That it's safe for me to live a, um, sorry, safe for me to live. That it's safe for me to live. In a way that doesn't feel like a roller coaster. In a way that doesn't feel like a roller coaster. And even though I may be addicted to the adrenaline this creates. And even though I may be addicted to the adrenaline this creates. I choose to know that there's a better way of living. I choose to know that there is a better way of living. And this can also be easy and joyful. And this can also be easy and joyful. And it doesn't have to be feast or famine. And it doesn't have to be feast or famine. We're letting go of this old story. I'm letting go of this old story. That I have to make it hard work. That I have to make it hard work. That it has to be overwhelming. That it has to be overwhelming. And it requires a lot of effort. And it requires a lot of effort. What if I could let this go now? What if I could let this go now? What if making $14,000 a month? What if making $14,000 a month? To begin with. To begin with. Easy and consistent and fun. It's 
easy and consistent and fun. I'm allowing this money to come to me. I'm allowing this money to come to me. In easy and consistent ways. In easy and consistent ways. And I'm allowing myself to be inspired. And I'm allowing myself to be inspired. To take action. To take action. That is in alignment with this goal. That is in alignment with this goal. But it's safe for me to make $14,000 a month. It is safe for me to make $14,000 a month. Easy, effortlessly, and consistently. Easy, effortlessly, and consistently. In fun and enjoyable ways. In fun and enjoyable ways. I'm liking this new story. I'm liking this new story. Of making $14,000 a month or more. I'm making $14,000 a month or more. Easily, effortlessly, and consistently. Easily, effortlessly, and consistently. I am ready for this. I am ready for this. I'm allowing the universe to inspire me. I'm allowing the universe to inspire me. I'm allowing the universe to support me. I'm allowing the universe to support me. In making this goal happen. In making this goal happen. In an easy and effortless way. In an easy and effortless way. I'm ready to take action. I am ready to take action. That's in alignment with this. That is in alignment with this. I'm ready to receive $14,000. I am ready to receive $14,000. Easily, effortlessly, and consistently. Easily, effortlessly, and consistently. Every single month. Every single month. I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling inspired about this. I'm feeling inspired about this. I'm allowing it to happen easily and effortlessly. I'm allowing it to happen easily and effortlessly. I'm ready to be shown the next step. I'm ready to be shown the next step. And when I receive the next step, I will take action. And when I receive the next step, I will take action. I'm ready for this. Last round. I'm ready for this. Feeling good about this. I'm feeling good about this. Feeling excited about this. I'm feeling excited about this. I'm ready for $14,000 a month. I am ready for $14,000 a month. Every single month. Every single month. Feeling good about this. Feeling good about this. Ready to receive this. Ready to receive this. I'm feeling great about this. Feeling great about this. In body, mind and spirit. In body, mind, and spirit. Okay, take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Okay, Karen, so how are you feeling right now? I feel like I had a sort of out-of-body experience. <laughs> It's like a, it was like a bot, like a pain body, like got up and it stood up and walked away from my body. It was very that. weird. <laughs> it was just right from the beginning. It was like coming apart like this, like this is their money story. This is not mine. And mm. it's, it's coming this, this pain body of their money story is just getting up out of my body and it was leaving from every direction. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was like another person got up and walked away and said, that's not yours anymore. Bye. <laughs> wow. That's exactly. And, and remember the, and that's the thing. And I think when, when's our next full moon? Oh no, we've just had one. God, what day? No, we're coming up to one, aren't we? Gosh. Some, so. some, somewhere soon. I don't know. <laughs> somewhere. Um, right. Next week. Yeah. We've got member zoom call next Monday. So, so just see what comes up between as we approach this upcoming full moon, there may well be other stuff that comes up to the surface for you. So it'd be a good idea to get that paper out, start journaling and noticing what 
other old money stories related to your childhood need to come up and to be let go of and also forgiven as well because you know our, we kind of want to say oh if our parents hadn't have done this I wouldn't be the way I am now but they were only dealing with their experiences what they were taught from their parents and it's just kind of like loving and forgiving ourselves but loving and forgiving them anyway and um I watched a Actually, I've heard Wayne Dyer share this story many times, but um, have you heard him tell the story of my greatest teacher about his relationship with his father? No. You'll have, he did a movie of it as well, actually. You can get the movie, um, I don't know, I think it might be on Hay House Movies, and I think the movie's called My Greatest Teacher, and it's all about Wayne Dyer's relationship with his father. I actually prefer Wayne Dyer's account of it, um, rather than the movie, because obviously he's telling it firsthand and his father was an alcoholic, walked out on his mother, left three boys, they all ended up in a foster home and he grew up full of anger towards his father. And, um, and anyway, he found out his father had died and he went with the intent of looking for his father's grave um, with the intention of, excuse my name, to piss on his dad's grave because he was that angry with him but he had this kind of like this spiritual moment where he got down to his knees and, you know, had just profound love for his father. And he said, in this moment, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And, oh, I've got goosebumps as I recall that story. And when he kind of made peace with that and forgave his father, he'd been struggling for so many years as a writer to get his books published. He, was, he drank too much himself. He literally, in that moment, he then went to a motel room, wrote for the next month, and then that's when his first book became an international best-selling book. And that's when he, you know, really took off after that, you know, making peace with his father. So between now and the next full moon, remember what came up, you know, what happened after you did that full moon exercise with your mom, just in terms of making peace with the old money story, between now and the next full moon, come back to this replay, you know, just fast forward to the tapping and tap, release, let go. And yeah, and I can't wait for you to come and share with us in the members community. I'm, I'm actually feeling called to like sit down and write who I am without that pain body attached to me now. Like, who am I now? <laughs> like, this mm. is so weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I it's so not part of me anymore. I don't even know. <laughs> like, who am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> who are we without these old stories? I tell you who we are. We are limitless. Yeah. And we really are. And, um, and, you know, we've just touched upon one aspect today, but how these old stories keep us stuck in other areas of our life as well. When we look at all the four pillars, relationships and everything we want to manifest in our lives so anyway that's what i'm looking forward to exploring on these episodes you know actually talking to my members talking to real people and because we've all got stories we've all got stuff that you know that we think happened to us but anyway oh i could talk to you all day karen it's but, so um, crazy though i can't even tell you melanie this is like the most profound tapping i've ever because i feel like i didn't know i had that much pain in my body like uh, i and and now it's it I only know it only because it's gone now. It's like, oh <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was so heavy on me. And now it feels like I have wings or something. Like everything's just flying, like stardust flying off of my shoulders. Or wow. Well I can't <laughs> wait to see what happens next for you. Thank and you thank so you much. so much. Yeah, thank you for um because I know it takes a bit of bravery, but you know, to come on the hot seat like this and share with complete strangers. But um, yeah, I think there's a big part. Let go of what other people think. You focus on you and your journey. And I'm sure lots and lots of other people have been helped as a result of this um, round of tapping as well. So thank you for those of you who watch live. And, um, and this will be eventually edited and put on YouTube at some time soon. But, um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll see you in the members community and um, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, everyone else watching. Take care. Have a great day. Bye for now.